Hi, I'm Alex. This is me in January 2022, leaving from home, with no idea that I'd spend my next few years circumnavigating the planet. Okay, to better understand the motivation behind this trip, and a bit about me, let's go back a few years. In 2018, I was 15 years old and had just finished building my first tall bike. This was my first ever attempt at riding it. By 2019, I was still riding tall bikes and attempting to create more. They were just so much fun and created smiles everywhere I went. In July 2019, I stripped down the bike, rebuilt it with better parts and decided to begin exploring my limit. Over the next year, I created eight more uniquely crazy tall bikes along with low riders, tandems and trailers. It was through this trial and error period that I was able to teach myself how bikes work. During the summer of 2020, I embarked on my longest trip yet. I cycled from my home all around Lower England, seeing as much as I could, and ending my trip a month later in Portsmouth. Less than a week after, I found Mambo. Built by a fellow tall bike enthusiast, Mambo was a new and improved design I didn't even know I needed. I spent the Christmas period modifying the frame and upgrading parts, preparing to attempt an even bigger trip. Then, in March 2021, I was ready to leave. I packed up the small amount of camping gear I had managed to acquire and set my destination for Scotland. To cut things short, I ended up staying in Scotland over the summer and only returned home in the winter. By now, the COVID regulations around the world had mostly lifted and I was eager to explore outside my small country. So I came up with a new plan. The aim was simple, to cycle a tall bike from the UK across Europe to the Eds of Asia. Turkey was the first country that was easily accessible, so I set my destination as Cappadocia, somewhere I'd always wanted to see. I also hoped to later continue my journey headed east, with the aim of being the first person to cycle around the world by tall bike. Okay, that's enough about me. Let's get back to day zero of the tour. What? Towards the ferry? Round about, turn right. Alright, thanks. Okay, think that's your breakfast, lunch and cabin key for you. Amazing, thank um, you. Boarding is normally about 9 o'clock, so when you head round, if there's an indoor waiting area, just so you're not out in the cold, you want to stay in there. Hi. Just go straight through and then bed. Alright, thanks. Whoa. I made it to the ferry port just in time and boarded with the tall bike. I had a seven hour transit ahead, so I booked an overnight cabin in the ferry using the last of my savings. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hiya. Uh, you made it by yourself? Sorry? You made it by yourself? A friend of mine made this. Oh. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Where are you going? Um, well, I'm staying in Holland for a while and then cycling across Europe, hopefully. Right. Yeah, Thank you. And that was it. I was officially in another country, and my trip had begun. I made a quick stop in Amsterdam before heading off to where I'd be staying for the next two and a half months. 
It was still the middle of winter, so beginning of the tour wasn't an option yet, and seeing as I'd spent the last of my savings on the ferry ticket and cabin, I needed to work out what to do until spring arrived. I ended up doing Workaway for the next two and a half months. Workaway is a homestay network that is targeted towards travelers who want to live in other countries. The idea is that you work in your placement, for instance, mechanics, childcare, or house sitting, and in return, you're provided with all meals and of course a place to live. This was a great option for me as it allowed me to pause and take some time to plan the next leg of the trip. Both of my workaways included basic house and garden maintenance, animal care, and keeping the kids company, as well as helping to teach them where necessary. And on my weekends off, I'd head into Amsterdam and play the piano at the train station, which allowed me to slowly save up around 400 euros to fund the first month of my tour. By the end of April, the weather had warmed up and I was finally ready to leave. So I packed up the tour bike again and set off for Amsterdam. I had the idea that Amsterdam would be my official start point as it would be easier to circle around to in the future if I ever did make it around the world. Also, Amsterdam is known as the cycling capital of the world. So it was a fitting city to begin with. My destination for day one was Utrecht. I was on my way to meet some fellow freak bikers who would accompany me into the city that day. I met Ed and Peter, who had a pair of very interesting bikes, and began riding together towards Utrecht. Utrecht is the third largest city in the Netherlands and is known for its many canals, parks, cafes and modern artworks. Day two was back to riding alone, as I began heading towards Arnhem. The Netherlands is a pretty flat country, so I was easily able to manage up to 80 kilometers most days.
As I left Romanum, I finally found my first Eurovelo sign. Eurovelos are a network of cycle routes spanning across Europe. This route follows the Rhine River from Den Haag all the way to Andermatt in Switzerland, and it would be the river I would be following for the next three weeks. After crossing into Germany and taking a quick lunch break, I had to race the evening to make it to my warm showers hosts for that night. I was hosted by Christiane, a German lady who lived in an interesting straw house, along with a Dutch man and a Ukrainian family who were all very interested in riding the tour bike. <laughs> Bogdan, we hold the hands. And then go slowly forwards. Yeah. I'm just saying, hold the hand. Next. Oh. Alban, you need. <laughs> um. <laughs> my neighbor, my neighbors are coming. They want to see me watch falling. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit easier than, than you sit on it. When you sit on it, then you think, oh, it's, it's really hard. It's really hard. Это нужно делать на лету. Stop. After saying goodbye and thanking everybody, it was time to get going again. I had to cross over to the other side of the Rhine River in order to continue following Eurovelo 15. But sadly, I didn't get far, as the police decided it was a good time to pull me over. To find out what happened, you'll have to wait until the next video. But for now, here's a little of what's to come in this series. <laughs>